K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer and welcome to my tour around the world featuring Microsoft Flight Simulator 5.1 for MS-DOS <laughs> or DOSBox. <laughs> Depends upon what you're using these days. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about our flight this time around. I'll just pull this map up here and uh, we are here at Grand Rapids, uh, Itasca County, Gordon Newstrom Field. This is in Minnesota, not, not Michigan. And we're going to be taking this route here, this 106 route. And we're going back to Duluth, but we're not going to land at Duluth. There's an airport right here. <laughs> the name of it's here but it's actually right here because you can see the green circle. So it's Richard I. Bong. Uh, there's also, there'll be some scenery we'll fly around in this area to, to take a look at, like the downtown uh, Duluth area and, and the bay here, and then we'll, we'll land at um, Richard I. Bong. And I thought it was a very um, interesting airport because of, how it's designed it's it's kind of like this and it's got this little taxiway in between it's almost like a no not like scissors it that was like another airport that i saw but this, one, this one's like v-shaped it's uh i just i found it very interesting and i figured that would be a uh cool place to to land now this airport is not one that anyone else created um even though i've got scenery in here for minnesota and wisconsin that have been custom created by some other authors they did not create the richard ibong airport so that is one that i created um and put in the and put in the game here all right so let's go ahead and get all of our radios set for Grand Rapids it's 111.4 which we already have it set here we just need to change our VOR change it to it was 106 and then for For Grand Rapids, this is going to be our my, or you know, the one that we're going to be looking at as far as the the distance. Uh, a heading of one four one would take us to it. That's assuming that everything is placed accurately. I can only go by coordinates based off of another, you know, like Flight Simulator ninety eight, which I think the airport was in that one so I can only go based off of that and take those coordinates and put it in here so that that is the best that I can do when it comes to um, accuracy okay so there we go we are all set there with our radios We'll go ahead and we'll get our adventure uh, started here so we can get some ATC chatter. There won't be any local ATC chatter. This will uh, be the default. And uh, we did that last time. Let's do this one. I like doing the random weather, but you can set up your so if i wanted to look up real weather and put it in there then we could just do like the atc chatter only 
So that you've got the option of doing both, which is kind of nice. All right, and we're all set to go. We'll just go to the end of the runway here and turn around and take off. National Airport departure information November Boy, they had a lot to say. TWA. Alright, so that was all ground we were listening to. Go ahead and drop our flaps one, and you'll see this comm radio change. Unless it already changed. Because <laughs> we should be on tower now. Once we bring our flaps and gear up, we'll be switched over to departure. So keep an eye on that comm radio so you can see how it changes. So we are now up. Gears up. Flaps up. We have to be at a certain altitude first. Landing at your own risk, that sounds harsh. <laughs> Yeah, this road we're following here will actually take us to Duluth. Take 
This should be changing to from here soon. There it goes. It changed. It's now 123.6, so we're on departure now. In order to get center, we're going to have to be a lot higher. So I can look that up here in the real ATC uh, package. So after takeoff, you will remain on the tower frequency through 2000 above ground level. After passing, you'll go to departure. That's 123.6. This continues until you climb through 4,000 above ground level, when the comm radio will change to 120.4 for on route uh, traffic chatter. And I just consider that center. Now we will hear actual Minneapolis Center going because I have not um, I have not changed those files since putting them in there. I think probably 5,500 will do it. Now I thought about maybe making my own generic ones by using uh, actual ATC chatter from different airports, but taking out the specifics. Oh, it just changed, it's 120.40, so we should be on center now. But yeah, creating my own default ATC chatter and just cut out like Duluth or Chicago or you know whatever, whatever it is that they're referring to. That way we're not having to listen to the same default uh, WAV files all the time. I think that should do it. I think we're probably high enough here. Well, maybe. We've got these, these nice puffy clouds here. 
you would fly to Cable Moderate, turbulence at 36, going up to 38, not sure if that is true, that is the next vector over. It's like the minute we hit the clouds, the 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 turn indicator here is like blah 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 blah. blah. Let's take a look at the altitude for Richard I. Bong. What is Minecraft one point? One four still missing. That's a good question. It's an ant venom uh, video. I'm gonna check that out here in a little bit. I think it was SUW. Yep. Elevation is I heard Eau Claire. We flew there, Eau Claire. <laughs> Eau Claire, Eau Claire, we flew there. We're just peeking over the clouds here. Good. Gotta love the nice glitchy effect effect there. Be flecked. Ooh, I don't know if that's normal or if that's a result of using DOSBox. I haven't really tried running this on PCEM, the PC emulator. I don't think it'd be running as smoothly as this, though. Well, we got some nice frame rates going with this. PC emulator, though, takes takes some resources in order to run. Oh, 
need to change and set to go here, so let's keep reading out of our Flight Sim 5.1 book here. So when we left off, we were going to talk about the book organization. So this is divided into four major parts and concludes with some important reference appendices. Appendix. Uh, part 1, The World of Flight Simulator. Part 2, Flight Academy Ground School. Flight, uh, part 3, Navigation and Aircraft Communication Systems. Part 4, Special Features and Add-ons. And then Appendices. Alright, so let's get to Part 1. The World of Flight Simulator. The first four chapters cover how you control and customize the simulator. Chapter 1 is a Get Your Feet Wet introduction to Flight Simulator, where you will experience your first solo flight and get to know how to use some of the simulator's controls. Uh, we're, we're doing plenty of flights, so I don't think we have to worry about that. Chapter 2 amounts to a quick hands-on tutorial of manipulating the 3D windows and view systems, while Chapter 3 touches upon customizing the simulator's many options using the pull-down menu system. Chapter 4 describes how the weather generator works and offers you an example of creating and editing your own weather. If you are already familiar with Flight Simulator 5.1 or feel that this is material you have already mastered in Flight Simulator 5.0, you can skip Part 1 and proceed to Part 2 of the book. But you should glance through Chapter 4 to learn about the new Low Visibility Weather Generator that works in conjunction with the new SVGA hazing video driver. You can actually see that occurring right here. Part 2, Flight Academy Ground School. The second part of the book deals with the actual airplane itself and covers cockpit, instrumentation, flight dynamics, and some fundamentals of airplanes and engines. Chapter 5 describes the operating principles of airplanes and engines, and Chapter 6 goes into some of the physics of flight, including a description of aerodynamic forces. Chapter 7 explains the operation and use of the cockpit instrumentation for the Cessna, Learjet, Sailplane, and Sopwith Camel. All the flight instruments and indicators are covered in detail along with a brief description of how they work. Chapter 8 instructs you on how to perform some basic flight maneuvers including the takeoff, climb, flying straight and level, the standard turn, the descent, and landing. Chapter 9 through 11 focus on the operating characteristics of three FS 5.1 aircraft, the Cessna, the Learjet, and the Sailplane. All right, need to adjust our heading just a little bit here. Part 3, Navigation and Aircraft Communication Systems. <coughs> the third part of the book gives you basic information on how to use the navigation and communication systems aboard your aircraft. Many illustrations and diagrams are offered as an aid to help you learn how to use the different systems. Chapter 12 teaches you about great circle navigation and how to use the NAV, VOR, DME, ADF, NDB 
and EFIS CFPD instruments. Also covered is the operation of the autopilot VOR lock and how the instrument landing systems ILS works. Chapter 13 challenges you with an adventure situation where you have a chance to fly around the world in the Learjet and try your hand at radio navigation. You're flying around the world and then the Learjet. Back in a cloud again. That's because we're going down in altitude. It's just fine. We're at 36 miles. All right. Uh, special features and add-ons is part four. This part of the book introduces special features found in Flight Simulator 5.1 and shows you scenery and hardware add-ons you can buy that will enhance your enjoyment of the program. Chapter 14 delves into dual player mode, where you can link up with other FS5.1 enthusiasts via modem, SLU mode, where you can quickly move or rotate your aircraft in a special non-flight mode, and the maneuver and landing analysis flight monitoring tools. Chapter 15 illustrates some of the add-on scenery and other products you can buy for FS5.1. Appendices. Appendix A covers the installment of Flight Simulator under DOS and Windows 95. Because Flight Simulator is so dependent on hardware speed, a brief performance comparison is also given for various PCs. You can use this data to compare your computer's frame rate with other M, blah, blah, blah. Appendix, Appendix B offers you a quick lookup guide for the various airports, VOR, and NDB stations. Um, and I've already accessed that uh, several times. Appendix C provides a keyboard command summary for all the keyboard controls. And the information found in this book will prove invaluable in your quest to master the latest and most sophisticated PC flight simulator on the market. Woo! And that's... For right now. And I saw my phone light up. Okay. Well, Okay, yeah, I gotta remember that even though we're we're using VOR one, the distance is actually going to be VOR two. This is um, Grand Rapids. We're just flying away from it. This is Duluth. So the distance to Duluth is thirty two miles. But we're not interested in catching any type of radio there except for 141, which will get us over to Bong Airport. Richard I. Bong. Let's see if we can get out of these clouds here. It's 
like I'm adjusting my trim so it's going down. It sure doesn't want to. Seem like it wants to go down now. Breaking through the clouds, or am I just seeing graphical things like that? <laughs> yes, we are kind of breaking through the clouds. Okay. Good. Looks like the wind kind of blew us around there a little bit. Trying to get back on course. We're not hugely off course, just a tad. There we go. More cloud turbulence. Somehow clouds translate to shaking a plane all over the place. Exactly. Okay, there's the road right there. And a nice big blocky cloud here. Now, as we start landing, when we put down our flaps, the comm radio will switch to 1 in 23.8, which is approach. Right now, it's kind of put us back on departure again because we because we don't have our flaps down, so. I mean, the program, the adventure only works as well as it's, you know, can be programmed. So that's why we're getting departure uh, wave files again. There's a great plug-in that... Uh, can be used with this in Flight Simulator 98, where <coughs> the frequency that you're tuned into on ProFlight 98, the ATC program, which if you're going to fly Flight Simulator 98, I highly recommend it. Do not fly Flight Simulator 98 without it. It is a fantastic program. 
a must have. But having the real ATC will link in the Pro 8 or Pro Flight 98 and it'll play the wave the 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 chatter files that match up with whatever you're actually tuned into as far as approach or tower or ground so it actually works a lot better with uh, Flight Simulator 98 in conjunction with Pro Flight 98 of course, you can use this on, on Flight Simulator 98 without Pro Flight 98. It works the same as it does here, but it's you get a much better experience when you've got the Pro Flight 98 ATC along with the real ATC chatter. And then when you're if you're getting like chatter files from li uh, like real ones from LiveATC.net. And it gives you this nice local feel of where you're flying. It's it's actually very cool. And you can always check out the um, Flight Simulator 98 videos if you haven't already. Um, I use both. We just are heading again. We are 20 miles away. That up ahead is Duluth. We've got the city texture uh, thing going on up there. Why'd you turn inside him? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I didn't see him. Man. One of the one of the people on the chatter, it sounds like he's going, man, I didn't. We looked around, but we didn't see him. Man. Just coming in. Uh, there is a river over there. Keep in mind that was uh, that was added by the author of this area. With, without that scenery file. You wouldn't be seeing this stuff. It would just be, it would just be a plain texture. 
Although we might see something around Duluth because Duluth itself is actually on Flight Simulator 5.1. Probably very plain though. But that's not the purpose of the series. We want to, uh, the purpose is to fly around the world with each of these simulators and enhance it as, as much as we can. Because we never saw anything like this done back when these were out. Because, well, there were no YouTubes, there were no gameplay videos. If anyone did a gameplay video, it was with a camera that was shooting behind them. And, well, you can imagine what that would have looked like. Looks like the clouds, the sky is clearing up. Got a message here. Let's see what it says. Happy New Year from Dairy Queen. Navy Juliet Sierra 216, turn left to 11 miles away. Not from the airport. Just Duluth. The Vore. And the airport, for that matter. They're real close to each other. What are you doing? Don't be knocking stuff over. So, Lake Superior, the bay, should be up there. Roger, Skyhawk, AJO 377 is with you. Uh, climb at 3500 if we can, and on to Southwest County, South County. 377, main uh, north of Highway 101. You can show me all navigation, main 10 feet north. 377, will do.
Man, I think I'd be seeing the Great Lake by now. It's up there. And that looks like the airport. Well, Duluth Airport right up ahead. So this is Duluth Airport. See, and there's this thing here that we saw before, which I am not sure what that is. Oh, it looks like it's just mountains. Yeah. I, mean, I kind of figured that's what it was, but it just... Looked odd from here. What? What? What is the matter, girl? You shouldn't be able to hear that sound. <laughs> Maybe you can, I don't know. It's in my headphones. You can start to see the bay. Here it is right there. Glare at me, don't you? Man, that marker light is annoying. Thank you. That's the part. Sick man. <laughs> She's sitting here staring at me. What? You've got food and water. Or is it just because you want attention? Is that it? So downtown Duluth is straight ahead. And then there is a piece of land that come, comes across here right over the bay and Sky Harbor not the Phoenix one <laughs> it's not international it's a Sky Harbor Airport which will be right on this strip of thin land and that is an airport that we'll be going to just not yet Contact 
make sure I had my oval team. It really is oval team. <laughs> hey, it's got vitamins and minerals in it, and it's got way less sugar than regular chocolate milk, and it tastes great, so... Town Duluth, straight ahead. I'm going to bring our throttle down, down some seven. more. And I think our airport is right over here. to be able to see the downtown area. I think there's a boat right there. Thankfully, I didn't have to create this stuff here in Flight Simulator 5. I had to do it in Flight Simulator 4. This thing is beginning to center, but I think I know where our airport is at. down one of our flaps here. Yep. We switch to approach now. Delta 565, the uh, emergency aircraft is going to go to 25 right to southwest back over there, 2 o'clock, about 4 miles. He's at 4700, be on the base momentarily. Okay, we're looking for him. We'll stay out of his way. Doing just a little bit of sightseeing here. we got Lake something Superior up here in front of us. Say again for something, Lynn, huh? Turn southbound now on the approach. Got a twin Downtown Duluth. Okay. Entry five eleven to maintain eight thousand. Five eleven down to eight. American eleven seventeen at the end. Turn right, cross only two five right on Alpha seven. Traffic will hold your position and contact ground point one. Hey, quick across on the red line. 
There's Sky Harbor. And our airport is up ahead there. I'm just not sure where the runway is at, but it is up ahead. Go ahead and bring our landing gear up here. Or down. <laughs> there's a boat. And there's a bridge, too. See the bridge? Thankfully, I didn't have to texture any of this stuff here. I just put in the airport itself. Let's see if we can <coughs> find the runway so we can line up a bit. Looks like we're close to the ground, but altimeter is 2,000, so we shouldn't be close to the ground unless the <coughs> height here is not accurate. Hey, I think I'm seeing some buildings over here. I don't think I put those in. Um, we're getting kind of close to the ground here. United 20, 24, reduce speed to 150, back will change to runway 28 left, clear to land. Okay, I'm seeing some definition, but that could be a taxiway. one of the runways. Not one that we can easily land at, but we might be able to get lined up over here. Continental 134, wind 060 at 5, runway 1 right, cleared for takeoff, Brazil, you have to left, to turn away. Under Continental 134, clear for takeoff. See it. I see the runway. Ten six twenty 
25, traffic off the right, will turn away, wind 0605, runway 1 left, clear for takeoff. 1 left, clear for takeoff, so that's 625. So here is my custom airport. Let's see if we can actually land on the runway, that would be cool. Holy moly. The heck, we were going backwards? There must be some type of ground uh, wind going on here. And I don't think that's the right altitude. I don't know. I could be wrong. But we're here. We're here at my lovely airport that I created. So I got the buildings over there. We'll compare this with the, uh, the real airport, too. And I put a fuel box right over here. <clears throat> nice and convenient for us to fill up our tanks. Alright, so we are here at Richard I. Bong, which is uh, in Superior. Um, I think we're in, we're still in Minnesota. It's like the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin are like right here next to each other. <clears throat> I mean, literally. It's Wisconsin. Okay. So, yeah. So, this is Superior, Wisconsin, and uh, Richard I. Bong Airport is in Wisconsin. So, we're kind of moving around between states here. Uh, so, let's go ahead and I'll pull up the uh, real airport and we'll compare it to what I created here in Flight Simulator 5. So, here is Richard I. Bong Airport. This is the real one here. <clears throat> so this is what I'm talking about. It's, you got like this boomerang shaped uh, airport. One run runway here and a runway here and this uh, this little connection part here. So I thought this was the interesting part of this of this airport. And then you, it's like you got these little fins here at the end, <laughs> so aircraft can like come up, you know, use this as a taxiway, come around, turn around, and you know, take off. <clears throat> And then you've got a you've got a turn off here, and uh, I don't know, like maybe a hangar or something. But here's your main here's your main ramp here with all the parking, and I put the fuel box like right here. <clears throat> and if we zoom out a little bit, you can see whereabouts where it's sitting. Here's the stretch of land that I told you about, and here's Sky Harbor. So, like I said, it's a real thin piece of land here. Um, that bridge they placed right here. And then uh, downtown Duluth is here. And the Duluth International Airport's right there. <clears throat> and you may have seen some of the, the river that's uh, that splits Minnesota and Wisconsin. All right. <clears throat> so now... Let's go ahead and take a look at what I did in Flight Simulator. 
Now, pay no attention to this gray. This just this is just a texture that happens to be out there. I just can't really see it. But this here is what I create. I don't know why it's flashing. <clears throat> so I created the polygon um, around the airport so that way it was easy to see the runways. <clears throat> But here I've got the runways. I got the little thin things at the end. Um, I placed uh, the buildings. I, I placed uh, a bigger building here. But I, you can see, I placed you know little buildings here, just just like how it is um, at the real airport. I mean, is it accurate? Well, no, not completely. But I tried to get it, you know, um, <clears throat> within reason. Here's the connection piece, you know, and then here's the other runway. The runway lengths I got from airnav.com. This stuff here I added. <clears throat> um, I added these because I saw them on a satellite map. I just saw some industrial things, so I just kind of put them in there. And this road is here. I added these roads, so I added these two roads. And then I just threw in some houses over here. And I also put in a church and a couple other buildings. And we can go ahead and take a look at that. We'll use slew mode so that way you can see the see the things that I've done here. <clears throat> okay, so here we are in slew mode. Now keep in mind this is using Apollo's uh, Scenery and Object Designer, or is it Object and Scenery Designer? Scenery and Object Designer, I had to look at the box. So the trees, I added these trees here. <clears throat> and then I went ahead and added this stuff here. Just to give it a, just a little something. And I made one of them different. I think that's because on the satellite view, <clears throat> there is actually one that is a little bit different. Let me pull that back up here again. So, do you see this stuff here? This is what I was looking at. I was looking at these, um... Yeah, okay, I don't really see one that's different. I think I just did one that was different just to break up the monotony of it. Remember the, those two roads I told you about? Here's one, and here's the other, and then the houses are sitting here. Of course, yeah, it's all over here, but I didn't want to sit there and put all of that in there. But uh, going back to Flight Sim here. So we got something going on there. And let's see, those houses I believe are over here. Yep. They're, you know, they're just kind of plain. I mean, there's really nothing overly special about them. I thought they were supposed to have textures, but I don't know what happened to the road. Why is it just a line? There should actually be a road down here. Now, see, that one's got a texture. Oh, there it is. I see it. Right there. See, so that has a texture. And that one over there's got a texture, too. Uh, but then this building here doesn't. <laughs> But yeah, uh, there you go. That is the Richard I. Bong Airport. Hey, and see, remember that dividing, that 
the big river there that divides uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. That's it right here. So, very, very cool. All right, so that's it for this flight. Uh, thanks for joining me. And be sure to check it out on the other simulators. And I will see you on the next leg of our journey. If you enjoyed this flight and trip back in time, then you might enjoy some of these other videos I made of the same flight. This is just a small sample of the other simulators I'm also using for the world tour, so you can check out how things compare there if you'd like. Or perhaps you have fond memories of one of them and just want to see more. There will be more flights, so remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around in the sky.